Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so delighted to be in front of you. This is my second time at NIEC. I was there in 2014, again as a speaker. Um, this time, it's a, it looks like it's a much bigger crowd and a much more varied crowd, and I'm very, very happy to be speaking in front of you. I was asking Christian to tell me what should I speak about, and I was saying that when people come and listen, so speakers in this conference, they should, when they go back, they should go back at least a little bit better. And then he said, why don't you speak about the human side of entrepreneurship, um, uh, which is what I'm going to speak a little bit today. The, the, my journey of being an entrepreneur and in my first business, we have created close to 350 entrepreneurs in, in 29 countries through the franchising route. I've had a lot of nice experiences. Uh, I've had a lot of nice experiences. Oh, he's doing the presentation for me. <laughs> it's already finished. <laughs> okay, so I've had a lot of nice experiences, but uh, I want to uh, share my thoughts with you on what is it to be an entrepreneur and what I believe are some very important aspects of being an entrepreneur, right? So let's uh, start with a little bit of exercise. So can whoever is young in this crowd, can you please stand up? Can you please stand up? Who is young? Only young people. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so can you just raise your hands five times? Just let some blood flow up. Yeah? Right. Please have a seat. <laughs> so those of you, those of you who believe that you are not young, can you please stand up? <laughs> okay, great. So can you please raise your hands seven times? <laughs> right? Okay, so we can get some blood flowing. Right, thank you. So is there anybody left? Somebody who thinks she's young or not young? Okay, we have covered everything. So I would like to have a very interactive session today, <coughs> with your permission. Uh, but before I start, I want to ask you, how many of you are entrepreneurs already? Please raise your hands. Oh, that's wonderful. That's half the crowd. Beautiful. And how many of you are going to be entrepreneurs or wishing to be entrepreneurs? Please raise your hands. Any aspiring entrepreneurs? Could you please stand up, all aspiring entrepreneurs? Yeah? Four, that's about it. Okay, so are you willing, please stand up, please stand up. Sit, please keep standing. Are you willing to participate in a bit of an experiment? Yes, so can two of you come over? <laughs> two of you? Yeah, so we are going to do a little bit of a, an experiment, right? So what I believe is the most important aspect of being an entrepreneur, right? So what you're going to do is, can you just stand apart a little bit? Yeah. So what you're going to do is, uh, it's a three-step process. What you will do is you'll put your left hand at the back, and then you'll raise your right hand, and then just twist around to see how far you go, right? When I say ready, yeah? And once you go as far as you can, just note down where you are, right? Make a mental note and then you come back. Is that okay? Right? Okay. Can you give a big round of applause? Okay. Start slowly. Yeah. Slowly. Go back. See how far you can go. And when, you, when you've gone the farthest, please stop. Yeah? Don't strain your back. Make a note. Yes? Yes. Come back. Okay, now step two, you're going to close your eyes and imagine that you're going to do this again without doing it, but imagine, but imagine that you're going even farther than what, what you went the first time. Okay, can we start now? Yeah, close your eyes, close your eyes, think, yeah, raise your hands, move to the right, go farther and farther, go beyond where you went. Right? And make a note of where you are. And when you're done, please open your eyes. 
Okay, so now let's try again. Can you just come up to the front? Okay, so now try again and see how far you're going. Okay, raise your hand. Keep going. Going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Did you go more than before? You did? Yes? Yes? No? I'm not sure. You're not sure. Okay, that's, that's a good answer. How about you? Okay, what did you feel? Pratik, where is the mic? Mic. Can I have this? What did you feel? You feel you did a little bit more? Well, yeah. Why is I, that? Um, probably because, like I said, I imagined it. So once I imagine where it goes, and I'm not already been in a state. So what happened to you when you imagined? Um, I felt pain. You felt pain. <laughs> <laughs> That's entrepreneurship. <laughs> okay. So what? Thank you very much. Can you give them a big round of applause? So what really happened is that they believed that they can do more than what they did, right? And this is a very famous uh, experiment. You will see that uh, being done in many places. But uh, I want to start by saying that the first thing that I believe, the most important thing if you want to be an entrepreneur is that you need to have belief. You need to have belief in what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And, and therefore, uh, throughout today, uh, whatever you do and, and whenever you listen and when you make your plans, do it with utmost belief because uh, frankly what we do when we deal with our own franchisees and other, other entrepreneurs is to actually build belief in them so that they can realize their full potential. Thank you very much. So I'll quickly start. Okay, so entrepreneurship, let's get prepared. I'll move to the other side. Yes. Okay, so for those of you who are just going to start and for those of you who are already started, you know that uh, the, the risks of being an entrepreneur, you lose money, you lose reputation, you lose time, and if it's so risky, why do you do it? And there is a reason why people want to be an entrepreneur. <clears throat> now, if, when you go back and ask uh, people why you want to be an entrepreneur, Pratik, can I have the flip? I'll do it myself. <laughs> Life of an entrepreneur. Right? <laughs> you? Okay. Can you hold it there, please? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, I'll keep talking. So the, 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 the different people have different motivations for being an entrepreneur. Somebody wants to have a status. Some people want to have some freedom. Some people say, I want to make money. Some people uh, often say that I want to build an organization and so on and so forth. Uh, in my view, it's very important that you should know why you want to be an entrepreneur, right? And, and diff the, the reasons can be different. And why is it important to know what your drivers are is because when the chips are down, what will keep you going is your real sense of purpose. And I have seen, uh, uh, I've come across so many entrepreneurs who start uh, to do well and, and when the market goes down or when the business is not doing well, they tend to give up. And the reason they give up is because they, they have sort of lost their sense of purpose. So I think it's, it's, it's very, very important for you to ask yourself and, and you know, sort of know your inner calling as to why you want to be an entrepreneur, right? Because it's not an easy journey. Right. Having said that, the next important thing <coughs> is when you start business these days, 
there is a lot of talk about valuation, right? Are you building a business or are you building a company for valuation? Or are you building a company for values, right? When you build a company based on certain values, the journey is extremely different from those which are sort of valuation raised. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are some investors here and they will tell you what their expectations are when you build an organization which, which has to be on valuation. And if you're on a valuation business, you have to make losses, right? If you're not making losses, you're not valued uh, much these days, as opposed to, let's say you're running your own business, cash flow is most important, so on. So this is, is a decision that you, I would recommend that you take very much upfront if, when you start your own business. Then, ideas. Ideas are plenty. Uh, 15 years ago, if you had an idea, people would, would throw in money, but these days, ideas are not the only thing. It's very important for you to answer some very basic questions. What problems am I solving? Will customers pay for it? Is the opportunity growing and is it scalable? Or is it sort of going to get stuck? What are my key differentiators? What are my reasons why customers come to me? And is this differentiator really sustainable and will it stay um, for long? Are there entry barriers? Or uh, is it, can it be easily copied, right? So in, in, in our world uh, where everything is more or less transparent, you start a business and before you realize there are five others who are already copying you. So that's very, very important that you answer these, some of these basic questions. Excellent. Having done that, in my opinion, uh, execution is 90% success. If you cannot execute, your business will not grow. So uh, I would say that a normal idea and a brilliant execution is much more important than a brilliant idea with a poor execution. So therefore, uh, the question that you have to ask is, uh, can you execute well, right? And uh, your attitude as an entrepreneur is, has to be very different. Right? There are no strict roles, there are no responsibilities that are sort of assigned to you. You have to do many things. So uh, in, in my early days, I remember that <clears throat> there was one occasion where we had uh, classes in the morning, 7 o'clock in Bangalore, and uh, the, the toilet cleaning person did not turn up. So I ended up uh, cleaning the toilets for nearly uh, three days. Because uh, you don't want to have a situation where your customer is unhappy. Right? So from to cleaning toilets to signing balance sheets, you do everything, right? That's the beauty of entrepreneurship. If you're not in the mood to do that, I would really ask you to think again. Do you really want to be an entrepreneur? Because you don't know what all you have to do to, to be successful, right? Okay, so I spoke about, <coughs> excuse me, I, <coughs> I spoke about belief, the power of imagination, the power of visualization. Can you think higher than what you feel? Sometimes we feel down and, 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 and we don't act, but can you elevate yourself to a level where you say, no, you know, I, my, my standards are here. I'm not gonna let my feelings, um, you know, bring me down. And are your dreams really compelling enough? Right? If you have a very compelling dream, you'll keep going. And when the going is not good, your conviction should be stronger than your doubts, right? We all have doubts but the conviction should sort of override the, the doubts and that's most important. Okay, so again, uh, I want to uh, pull back. So I want to uh, do a little bit of an experiment. So can I have the other two startup entrepreneurs? Yeah, would-be entrepreneurs, two more. Please give them a hand. Maybe you can speak a little bit about yourself, what, why you're here and uh, what you're expecting and sort of introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I ask you a few questions, yeah? All right. Um, my name is Inge and I'm a student, uh, not in Oslo, from a small town called uh, Bö. The, what I'm studying is innovation and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, currently I'm working on a small, small project uh, related to school, uh, in the end, um, I plan to be an entrepreneur and work with my own big project. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you.
Hello, uh, my name is Haldor. I study at the Norwegian School of Economics. And I'm just, I just happened to be here in Oslo when my mother decided to give me an invitation to the conference and I just couldn't say no, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the only reason I'm here. Wow. That's a great reason to be an entrepreneur. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question. <clears throat> Let's say after the conference, you're walking down, back, you step onto the road, right? You're just very happy, nice, you've learned a lot of things. You walk up, somebody is walking towards you, totally stranger, you don't know, big built man. He comes and gives you a tight slap, right? All right. And then he walks away, right? What would you do? Um, if he's bigger than me, Okay. If he's tiny, I will probably say something. Say, no, I will say something nonetheless. Though. But uh, I guess I would have more confidence in saying something if he was same size as me. Or okay. You won't. You won't hit him back. No. 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 He suppose he slaps you a second time. Yeah, then probably, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Right, um, so he might be bigger than me, but I'm guessing he's not taller than me. So I would at the very least try to figure out why he did it, you know? Everyone has a reason, and maybe there's something I did. Maybe I try to figure out what, what that was, and maybe I can try to deal with that. You know? Okay, and if he slaps you a second time, and a third time, well, again, if that might be because I keep continuing to do the, the, same, uh, the same mistake I did the first time. So maybe I should, I should try, to, try to figure out. So you won't hit him back? You will not hit him back? Um, I wouldn't slap him, but I'm, again, I, I, I don't know why. You don't know. Okay. Thank you very much. Give them a big round of applause. So how many of you in the audience says, no, I will slap him back? Please raise your hands. Okay, so that's beautiful. Okay. Norway is a peaceful country. <laughs> okay. So why is it that same situation, different people behave differently, right? And it's got something to do with maturity. <clears throat> so what happens is uh, the people who said <coughs> they would slap back, your reaction is normally emotional, right? So you are provoked and you slap back, right? So that's one way of doing it. The second one is you say, uh, I want to understand the reason. I want to understand the logic. I want to understand the rationale behind it. And, and, and most people who come from the Western world are trained to think rational, right? Very important, right? What's the reason behind it? But let's ask uh, this question. Suppose you walk, um, in, in my country you have a lot of these uh, saints, right? People who are big in meditation and, and all of that. Or if you go to a church, uh, you see the, the head of the church and so on. Suppose you go to a saint and, and tell him, uh, look here, I don't like you, you're a useless fellow and uh, you're a fraud or something like that. How do you think he will react? You're not sure? Emotional? No, I don't think so. Uh, why would, well he's not a saint if he's emotional. <laughs> he would say, okay, my child, please take a seat. Right? Yeah. Yes? Right. Why do three different people react to the same situation in three different ways. The first one is that you're emotional, right? Your, your mental state is largely comprised of emotions and you want, you're easy to be provoked. The second one is you're a little bit higher, but you look for logic, you look for rationale, right? You want to see the reason behind everything. But the third one is what I believe is intellectual. Intellectual people, they look at what is my desired outcome? If somebody is going to provoke me by getting provoked, am I going to achieve my desired outcome? Yes or no? 
I want to urge all of you, if, if whether you're already an entrepreneur or going to be an entrepreneur, to elevate your thinking to, to at least this space, right? You cannot be here perfectly, but a little bit here, a little bit here. Because in business, you more often, you more often come across situations where you have to take hard decisions. And those decisions, because you're passionate about your business and you're emotionally invested in your business, you will end up taking not so great decisions. So it's very important to elevate your thinking to an intellectual level. And this is science. This is not my theory, this is science. To a level of intellect where you say, let me ask what is it that I want to achieve and therefore let me take the right decisions. So I think uh, for all of us, even in our daily lives, this is a very important aspect of training ourselves how to think. <clears throat> so again, uh, uh, Coming back to to the entrepreneurship, I believe being an entrepreneur is like running a marathon. It never stops. Um, you, you build an organization, then you pass it on to the next set of people or you sell it, but the organization continues. The organization always outlives the entrepreneur. And it's very important that we prepare ourselves to, to run that marathon. So do you have the willingness and do you have the energy to do that? And, uh, and it's very important to, to know that you need to have that energy, otherwise you're going to get tired. So, all of you who are entrepreneurs, tell me how many times have you felt frustrated in the last two years? Please raise your hands. Yeah, ma'am. Can you please get up? Can you can you please stand up, ma'am? Yeah. So tell me what frustrated you. Can I can I sit? I have a bad knee. Sorry. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. not control all, all the, the deadlines or the inputs. Uh, that's all really. You want to go faster than... Okay, so if you had a chance to do it again, would you do it differently? <coughs> Excuse me. I would probably meditate more and trust more mm -hmm. <laughs> to keep my calm balance and energy management. So if, if the project got postponed, was it really in your control or was it beyond? No, no it wasn't. <coughs> so, yeah. Okay, so one more, please. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay, somebody else? Frustration? Do you want to share? Yes, please. Okay, so, so what? First, then, uh, then they use, uh, so what? What was frustrating for you? To get customers. To get customers. Yeah. Well, uh, that's everybody's frustration. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Give them a big hand. So I have uh, I have a very simple theory, and this is my own theory. I always think that ability and ambition are like two legs. Yeah, this is ability, and this is ambition. Very often, when we feel frustrated. It's because we want to achieve something and we don't know how to do it, which means that the ability is behind the ambition. Then you start working on the ability. Then you feel frustrated because you, you can achieve more, but you're not doing it, right? Then your ambition is less, and then you increase your ambition, right? I'm a first generation entrepreneur. I've never had any mentor. Whatever I did, I had to work on myself. And this is the theory of moving forward. Ability, ambition. At one point, one is always ahead of the other, but you bring yourself forward. That's by building your own ability and ambition. And the reason I'm saying this is because <clears throat> when you're an entrepreneur, you have to take 100% responsibility for yourself, yourself, your business, your life. There are so many things that happen which are beyond your control, but you cannot say, I had no control. Then you lose the opportunity. When you started, you knew that you will have situations that will be beyond your control, didn't you? Right? So it's just a question of preparing yourself. 
No, you're not the only one. Everybody has situations which go beyond their control. Right? So I think it's very important to understand this simple concept. I remind myself every morning, okay, where do I like, what should I work on, is it the ability or ambition, and, 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 and sort of start working on it on a, on a regular basis. And this is an ongoing uh, phenomenon. But I'm just trying to simplify this so that you understand this and you can practice this effectively. Okay, choosing the right team. So how many of you believe that you have 10 on 10 with, the, with respect to your teams? How many of you would give 10 on 10 for your team? You know, are you really happy with your team? 10 on 10, yeah? Yes? Okay, 9 on 10? 8? 7? 6? Okay. So, what do you do? What do you do when you believe that you don't have the right team? And And... Across the three companies that I run, I have 1,200 people, right? So I obviously do not have a chance to interact with everyone, and they are in different parts of the world. I formulated this, again, as a very simple method of measurement just to make sure that you have the right people doing the right jobs. To me, success, uh, uh, the contribution of an individual depends only on two things. The ability of the person, and the willingness of the person, right? So I try, we have a grading system where we grade people on what is their ability on, on, on a scale of 10 for that job and what is their willingness on a scale of 10 for that job. So at the highest, you have a very high ability and a very high willingness, you promote them, you make them a leader and, 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 and train them, invest to make sure that they are growing. If the willingness is high and the ability is low, you train them because they are willing to learn. If the willingness is low and the ability is higher, they need a lot of inspiration. You need, to, you need to send them to NIEC or something like that, right, to get inspiration. But here's the problem. You have people with very low willingness and ability, right? And then you have to remove them or replace them, right? This uh, is a very simple template that I follow to make sure that there is communication between your HR, and, and your leaders and managers. And, and every time there is a review, I, I normally ask, okay, what is, the, what is their index on willingness and what is their index on ability, right? And people sort of align very well. They know that, okay, this is how they are measured. So if, if, you have not, if you have no other way of doing things, I would recommend that you follow this because it's worked very well for me. <coughs> Okay, so again, uh, the three-axis approach. Again, I, I really want to give you something which I've been following all my life um, because I did not want to be in a situation where I'm overly dependent on others for my success, right? We all are, but I, I said I will try my best to prepare myself to be successful. So if you really want to succeed, right, and, and, and I, I know most of you want to, there are only three things that you need to focus on. and, and I put this on the three axes. The first one is perspective, right? building aspirations. You cannot be an entrepreneur unless you build aspirations. And aspiration building is never ending. Right? I, I've been in business for 32 years and I feel like I'm 28. I want to go on for the next 30 years. I, I tell people, oh, it's so sad that uh, I, I, I don't have another 30 years or maybe I, I will not have another 30 years, I don't know. But I have ideas and plans for the next 30 years because I keep building the aspirations. I want to do this, I want to do this, and so on and so forth. This is the most important aspect of being an entrepreneur. Now, if you cannot, if you want to be a good entrepreneur, you have to be aspirational. It doesn't matter whether you achieve it or not, but this is a very important aspect of uh, being an entrepreneur, building perspective. The second one is how resourceful you are. Right? which means your, your ability to, to build contacts, to build knowledge, to build skills, to sort of prepare yourself to run the business. Right? Businesses don't run by themselves. Businesses are run by capable people. Right? And you need to have the ability to put these people together, put a process together and, and run these things. And the third thing, of course, is execution, the ability to get things done. Now tell me, 
are these three things in your hands or do you have to depend on somebody else right all these three are in your hands and believe me if you start working on this you will succeed and you will reach your milestone someday it doesn't matter when you do but you will get there and like i said it's such a marathon you will be successful right this is something that i i i normally recommend i i advise all of you to follow uh, do it like a science so every morning do a review and ask where you stand and where you need to <coughs> invest your time and i think you will see great results the other thing <coughs> uh, i would recommend is is what i believe you should avoid what i call the four c's uh criticism to dealing with people customers teams and then you get into a uh, you feel anger and sometimes you getting in get into a critical mode what you do is by criticizing you create negativity right and these are things which are not just good for being an entrepreneur but being a good uh, human being i think it's, it's very important complaining <clears throat> i we all complain oh this is not okay that's not okay what you do when you complain is that you're telling your brain don't find a solution and this is brain science when you complain you're telling the brain don't find a solution and then you start complaining right and what do you complain about you you always complain about things which can be solved you never complain about things which cannot be solved so you're not saying oh i'm complaining about gravity because i'm falling down and hurting myself you're not doing that right you know it cannot be solved right <clears throat> uh comparison a big problem being an entrepreneur right oh i worked so hard that guy had a lucky investor he went ahead i'm so back uh, i'm i'm so much far behind i feel very weak no no two individuals are created equal no two situations are created equal never 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 make yourself feel negative about yourself by comparing right and compete uh he did this therefore i want to do this that company did this therefore i have to do this no you avoid this four c's focus on the three axes 99% success guaranteed right i want to promise you that <clears throat> so uh, is it good to be an entrepreneur i think it's very good to be an entrepreneur but my focus would that would be as follows what is important to be a successful entrepreneur or to be a happy entrepreneur right how many of you feel that being happy is more important than being successful of course success is important right being successful is not entirely in your hands we all work hard all entrepreneurs work hard not everybody achieves the same level of success being happy is in your hands and if you are a happy entrepreneur you will have very happy employees no employee likes to work for an unhappy boss right we all know that right yes so it's very important that you are a happy entrepreneur you are a great individual because you tried please i have huge respect for even people who have a little shop and they employ three or four people because they are creating jobs right creating jobs is the only way by which we can bring up the society governments cannot do it only people like us entrepreneurs can do it because the more people we more jobs we create the more um, wealth we create in the society and the society uh, lifts up a little bit so we create jobs we create value for customers we create more entrepreneurs and we create more wealth for society it's a deeply rewarding experience it's an extremely rewarding experience so in the last 31 years we have <coughs> uh, employed currently 1200 people so more than 10000 people have gone through our organizations directly maybe about 40 50000 if you take all our franchises so it's an extremely gratifying experience to be in that situation right so i i you know we back in the east we have a very different concept of money and i wanted to share that a little bit um i believe that the value of money is to have it when you need it now if you have a lot of money in the bank uh while well, you feel good about it i don't think it has any value right so money is like your own shadow it should follow you and money is the outcome of the business and not the reason for the business right the reason for the business is that you created 
nice product or service and you make a customer happy right and then the money follows right so uh, the the happiness of doing something beyond your own uh, need is uh, truly joy joyful and despite the challenges understand that between joy and job there is only a one letter difference right and it makes a lot of difference right so you have to choose you want joy or you want job right and uh, and and life will be extremely fulfilling right so every entrepreneur is a true hero because every successful company is a great example of serving the society be, be it customers be it be it uh, vendors be it all the uh, the employees and so on and you do that beyond yourself that's where you you do make compromises you do give up on few things but i think the the satisfaction that you are serving a larger community is much more gratifying right so i'll i'll just conclude by giving the key takeaways you should know why you want to be an entrepreneur execution is key and you have to build belief and you have to raise your ability and ambition and you practice the three axis approach avoid the four c's and first be happy and then be successful right so i want to thank you by giving an opportunity to address you i want to thank christian and alexandra for the wonderful arrangement but next time i think you should have a bigger hall because there are a lot of people <laughs> uh, who are wanting to come but wish you great success thank you ladies and gentlemen for listening to me i will be around if you have any questions to ask and i wish you a wonderful conference thank you very much